It seems as if customers and manufacturers alike are gravitating towards 270 parallel twin middleweight naked bikes that are starting to feel somewhat homogenous these days. But for those of you who still want some style, some character, and a unique motorcycle that will set yourself apart from the crowd, look no further. Here are seven of the best Neo Retro motorcycles available. Let's get into it. So what does Neo Retro even mean? Well, former Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart said, I know it when I see it in regards to obscene material materials, and I think that reigns true as far as neo-retro bikes go. But one motorcycle that is hard to debate that fits into the neo-retro mold is the Ducati Scrambler. As a Ducati Scrambler desert sled owner myself, I already have sang my praises of the platform, but for today's purposes, I will focus more on the street-oriented models. The Scrambler comes in quite a few trims and two different engine sizes. The Scrambler Icon is the most straightforward and inexpensive model from Ducati. It is an 803cc air-cooled 90-degree L-twin Desmo engine, which evokes plenty of Ducati charm and nostalgia. The Scrambler recently got a little revitalization with the most recent models having received an updated tech package as well and now come equipped with a 4-inch TFT dash, two rider modes, cornering ABS, and switchable traction control. This bike is a simple, classic, fun little roadster that makes about 73 horsepower and 48 foot-pounds of torque. If you like the look of the Scrambler Icon but you want a little bit more power, there are also the 1100 models that feature a 1079cc L-twin engine. The 1100 Sport Pro is kind of the big bad top shelf Scrambler model that spares no expense. Of course, the larger engine is making more power at a claimed 86 horsepower and 65 foot-pounds of torque, but the 1100 Sport Pro is also outfitted with plenty of high-end components like fully adjustable Olin's front forks, an Olin's monoshock in the rear, and Brembo brakes. The 1100 models didn't see the most recent update of the Icon full throttle and night shift did, so it's missing out on that TFT display, but still makes use of the power modes and rider aids. The Icon has a retail MSRP of $10,095, dollars and the 1100 Sport Pro costs $16,595. But there are a handful of different Ducati Scrambler models available, so if you're thirsting after that two-valve air-cooled Ducati engine, you'll be able to find a model that fits your style. They're also pretty readily available on the used market because Ducati made a bunch of these engines and bikes. Royal Enfield has received a lot of attention on many channels across YouTube and I guess that is not going to stop anytime soon. The next Neo Retro bike on the list today is the Royal Enfield Continental GT. We had the INT650 as our last beginner bike giveaway motorcycle and we were truly won over by its charm. Fun fact, known as the Interceptor 650 in other countries, Royal Enfield had to name it the INT650 in America because Honda's trademark on the name Interceptor. Anyway, the Continental Continental GT was released alongside the Interceptor and features a few changes that make it look and ride a little more sporty. Royal Enfield was originally an English motorcycle brand and this bike pays clear homage to the English cafe racer scene of the 1960s. Within its tubular steel frame lives an air and oil cooled 650cc parallel twin that makes 47 horsepower and 48 foot pounds of torque. There are actually quite a few aftermarket performance parts available for these bikes made by SNS, and considering how analog and easy these bikes to work on, not to mention the incredibly accessible purchase price of around 6,500 bucks, it is completely reasonable to use the Continental as a platform for a custom build. With such an inexpensive bike, it is inevitable that there's some discount parts, like the Zoom Cruise tires, but the bones are good and the build quality is there, and it's hard not to give these bike a stamp of approval for an incredibly budget-friendly option for someone looking for that Neo Retro Cafe Racer style. And also, that Super Meteor 650 is coming right around the corner, folks. Speaking of customizing your motorcycle, have you seen all the new parts we have available over at shop.yaminu.co? Use our gear make and model feature to see which parts will fit perfectly on your bike. We have tires, chains, exhaust systems, and plenty of fancy farkles like high quality aftermarket mirrors and turn signals. Treat yourself and finally retire those eBay parts you've been rocking. And if you're not in the market for parts, maybe it's time to upgrade your starter gear. On shop.yaminu.co, you'll find helmets, jackets, boots, and gloves for all budgets and riding styles. And in typical Yaminu fashion, every dollar spent on the site is an entry to win one of our giveaway motorcycles. And members at yaminu.co get 10% discount on those orders. Head over to shop.yaminu.co and see what it's all about. Now back to the video. A motorcycle that many consider to be the gold standard of Neo Retro motorcycles is the Yamaha XSR 900. This bike still uses the awesome 889cc triple cylinder found in the MT-09, but it is adorned in a more classic retro outfit, but don't let the styling fool you. The XSR 900 is as much of a ripper as the MT-09 and will not hesitate to wheelie on command and stick up its middle finger at all the school zone crossing guards. 
The CP3 engine not only has a nice and spicy exhaust note from the crossplane design, but it's making 117 horsepower and 69, nice, foot pounds of torque. Weighing in at just 425 pounds wet, the XSR900 has plenty of get up and go. To keep the XSR900 somewhat controllable, the Spike is equipped with an adjustable KYB suspension in the front and rear, dual front brakes, and a 6-axis IMU that controls wheelie control, traction control, and ABS. And of course, the level of interference for each system is adjustable because Yamaha is not in the business of pretending that they don't know why you bought an MT-09 in Cafe Racer cosplay. Plus, this bike has some nice touches like a TFT dash and a bi-directional quick shifter from the factory. And considering this bike costs just a little over $10,000, it's hard to argue that it doesn't offer the most bang for buck in the Neo Retro category. One of the motivating factors that causes riders to gravitate toward a Neo Retro style of motorcycle is character. They don't want a cookie cutter parallel to a naked bike or an inline four sport bike. They want a motorcycle that is a little more bespoke and use of engineering that cannot be mistaken for anything else. A motorcycle that really bodies this ethos is the Moto Guzzi V7. While the other modern V7 utilizes an 850cc transverse V-twin with cylinders opposing opposite of one another on either side of the frame, its namesake, the original V7, made use of a 700cc V-twin in that same style. Bikes like the XSR900 might outperform the Guzzi by a country mile, but the V7 more than makes up for its modest performance with character and authenticity. The air-cooled engine makes 65 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque, which is plenty of power to make this bike enjoyable to ride. But speed would not be why you would be buying a Moto Guzzi, who hasn't competed in MotoGP since racing their 8-cylinder Odo Cylindri in 1957. You'll want a Moto Guzzi for the style, the character, and because the comments you'll get from Harley Pirates when they say, God dang, son, you put your engine in sideways. I ain't seen that in the Screaming Eagle catalog. While not being an absolute performance monster, Guzzi still has the V7 equipped with the Brembo caliper up front, traction control, and two-channel ABS. The V7 Stone costs $8,999, which is kind of a bargain when you consider that Harley-Davidson is selling bikes that rely on the same sort of themes for nearly twice the price. BMW is another company that is not shy about capitalizing on their storied history. The R9T is their take on a neo-retro motorcycle that has classic air and oil-cooled boxer engine that is reminiscent of the classic bikes from BMW while having the modern trappings of a 21st century motorcycle. The Torque Forward 1170cc boxer makes 109 horsepower and 85.5 foot-pounds of torque. It also has all the features of a high-end BMW fit and finish like fully adjustable upside-down front forks, dual Brembo front brake calipers, and a single-sided swing arm. The R9T, which also has to be one of the worst names for a motorcycle if I'm being honest, has a pretty standard riding position that you would expect from the sort of retro cafe inspired bike. It has a low flat handlebar and foot pegs that are mounted slightly back on the frame for a somewhat casual and sporty position, but still nowhere near as aggressive as you would find on a sport bike. This bike has a stripped back analog feel with dual gauge speedometer and tachometer, while still having the safety and comfort features you would expect from a modern motorcycle like ride modes, ABS, and stability control. Of course, it's a BMW, so there are plenty of other options available if you were so inclined. The base model R9T has an MSRP of 15,945 clams, so if you're a BMW simp or just really love that boxer wobble, you'll have to determine for yourself whether you can handle that price point. If you've made it this far and you're at all familiar with the Neo Retro Motorcycle segment, you're probably wondering where the Triumphs are at. Triumph has made no qualms about leaning into their British motorcycle heritage and have some models like the Bonneville, for instance, that bear a striking resemblance to their mid-century ancestors. The Bonneville has kind of been the go-to bike for the hipster type riders who are big into the cafe racer aesthetic, and so instead, the Triumph Speed Twin 1200 gets the place on the list today. The Speed Twin is like the Bonneville's more modern sibling and has a lot more in common with bikes like the XSR900, a sporty bike in retro attire, whereas the Bonnie is more like the bikes like the Royal Enfield, just a very classic with a slight sprinkle of modernity. The Speed Twin 1200 is a liquid-cooled 1200cc parallel twin engine with a 270-degree crank, and while I have made light of how ubiquitous the 270 degree crank p-twin has gotten it is hard to deny that if you're gonna have a parallel twin it needs to have a 270 degree crank we don't need any more bathroom fan sounding 180 degree twins the engine and the speed twin make just about 100 horsepower 98.6 if you want to be exact and 83 foot pounds of torque it is outfitted with dual brembos in the front and a nissan caliper out back the triumph speed twin 1200 will run you an msrp of twelve thousand five hundred ninety five dollars but i gotta say those scrambler 1200s look mighty fine from Triumph 2. That's the one I would get. 
And last on the bike on the list today is the Harley-Davidson Sportster S. Like I mentioned at the top of the episode, Neo Retro really means nothing or it can mean anything. Essentially, Harley reinvented or reimagined the Sportster model, which is historically a classic old heritage style motorcycle, so I'm counting it as Neo Retro. The Sportster S has been out for a little while now and they've been relatively controversial. HD riders just love getting angry about things, don't they? It might not be the most attractive motorcycle or have all too much in common with the Sportsters of yesteryear, but it is a great option for riders who are attracted to the Harley-Davidson brand, but want a bike that is somewhat competitive with offerings from other companies. The Sports Dress is a 1250cc Revolution Max engine that makes 121 horsepower and 94 foot-pounds of torque, weighing in at just 502 pounds wet. Yes, you have to specify just 500 pounds when talking about a motorcycle from Harley-Davidson. This is by far the most performance-oriented motorcycle available from the motor company, without including the Pan America. This bike, too, has plenty of tech because it seems you can't sell a motorcycle these days without it, so cornering ABS, ride modes, cruise control, and traction control all come equipped from the factory. The Sportster S costs just $15,499. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Would you prefer a slower motorcycle that has more character, or a four-cylinder sport bike that can go 186 miles per hour? Let me know. As always, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and click that notification bell while you are at it. We put out daily content you are not going to want to miss. Maybe I'll make fun of your bike in the next one. And if you're wondering, I've got a Neo Retro bike in my stable. It's my lovely Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, but I've also got a Turbo Boost and an H2. So I think life is all about balance. Catch you in the next one. Fact. In a group of 70 people, there is a 99.9% .9 chance two will share a birthday, although you would need a group of 366 people to have a 100% certainty of a shared birthday. Goodbye. Keep watching.